And so they were upset about these property taxes, but then there is um, more um, issues at hand. So they were also disgruntled because of how the special education services were being delivered for their, their children. So many of you probably know, but under federal special education law, the Individuals with Disabilities Education Act, or the IDEA, um, the state and then through the public school districts have legal responsibilities even for students with disabilities who are in private schools. So in this community, the public school district, the East Ramapo School District, still needed to provide special education services to the Hasidic students who were enrolled in, in private schools if those students were um, eligible for IDEA services. And then also under the federal law, the public schools had to provide the education in the least restrictive environment or what's referred to as the LRE. And so so the public school, um, by law, decided that the Hasidic students with disabilities needed to join the public school children in the public schools. It was partially based on a United States Supreme Court case that has since been overturned, but part of the issue was that um, public school employees couldn't go out to private schools and provide um, education because it could be a, a, a violation of the First Amendment of the Establishment Clause um, of separation of church and state. So anyway, the public school was just trying to follow the law, but the Hasidic families were really upset about this. Um, they didn't want their children at public schools. They didn't want their children to be mixed in with non-Orthodox Jewish uh, children. This, this community of, of Orthodox Jewish families had a distinct culture and they had distinct customs and they were vastly different from the mainstream American culture. So they thought when the public school district was telling them that the, the students with disabilities needed to be put into the public school environment, they thought that this was incredibly traumatic for their students to be separated from the world which they were comfortable. So there was this one Hasidic advocate um, who was taped on the NPR broadcast uh, who argued that the public school district just needed to change the law. And he was very angry that they were using the law as an excuse, but what this advocate um, might not have understood was the inability for the district, you know, this local school district to simply just change federal law and the, the Supreme Court precedent that also surrounded the law. Um, so when everything changed was in uh, 2008, the Hasidic Jewish community seized the school board. There were, ended up being six Hasidic school board members and three non-Hasidic school board members. And at that point, there was a systemic defunding of the public schools. So departments were cut by 80 percent. A ton of teachers lost their jobs. Social workers, assistant principals, and others were fired. And there was one student who was interviewed who said because I didn't have money to have actual classes in her schedule, she actually um, had four lunches and two study halls. Mm. Um, and then the Hasidic members ended up, the, the school board members ended up hiring this controversial lawyer um, who is known um, across the state who ultimately ended up having a physical altercation with parents after a school board meeting. So um, that is a part of the story. There's more of the story in the case, but um, uh, suffice it to say that these legal battles are still underway. In 2015, the New York State Board of Education appointed a team to monitor the district because of all the issues it was having. Um, and some of the aspects have improved uh, for the public school students, but the, the battle's not, uh, um, not over yet. You might be wondering, um, with this case in mind, what would be the best way to utilize this case, maybe in a, a classroom setting. And um, after the, the case is described, uh, then in the, the case it goes into three different sections. The first section uh, focuses on religion and the law. The second section focuses on special education law. And the third section focuses on political issues. And so instructors can um, you have um, students read each of these sections to give them the background information that they need to know to fully analyze the case. The religion and the law section covers the U.S. Supreme Court precedent that relates but then also applies the facts of this East Ramacopo um, case to the, the general precedent. And then um, the special education law section, of course, describes um, the idea um, and, you know, the, the uh, different principles behind idea that the East Ramapo School District needed to follow and, uh, and applies um, uh, you know, the facts of the case to that. And then the political issues does the same um, where it talks about some of the uh, research uh, surrounding politics and education and how uh, leaders actually are politicians and the different um, issues that they have to be concerned about when it comes to both the macro politics and the micro politics um, that affect their districts and buildings. So. Um, 
these three sections are important for students to know so that they have the background knowledge and they can analyze the case and discuss the case. But then um, what uh, students can do are um, go through a series of activities and questions that we provided. And one of the activities involves students to take um, multiple perspectives. So it uh, is an option for the instructors to divide the class in half and have half of the students take the perspective of the Hasidic Jewish uh, population and half of the students to take the uh, perspective of the public school students and the, the others in the district. So um, there's a variety of, of activities and questions like that that instructors can use as well. And then um, I guess the significance of the case, why you know, would um, you want to use uh, this case? Um, I think it's fascinating. Um, I think it's a, an excellent example that uh, has uh, juicy details. You know, how many times are you going to have a, a case that involves a physical fight between a school district lawyer and parents? So I think that's definitely an attractive um, characteristic of the case. But then also there are so many um, important lessons to be learned from the case. One aspect that I really like is that it shows how complex leadership can be. So in educational leadership programs, Programs, we discuss these issues oftentimes in isolation. So, you know, as I already mentioned, I teach a law class. Sometimes I teach a politics class. Um, and, you know, students might take a class about budgeting. They might take a class about special education leadership. So they're oftentimes discussing the, the, the moral, ethical, and legal, and political issues in isolation. But this case combines all of those issues and shows just how complex um, a, a leader's job is and, and how that leaders have to, to you know, leave their preparation programs and in actuality deal with all these distinct issues all together and, and sort through all the, the, the details. Um, and then I guess I should share with you what uh, particular points in the case ought to be part of the teaching deliberations. I guess, you know, kind of the main lessons learned. Um, one big takeaway that I see from it um, involves that minorities can become the majority. So as I mentioned, the Hasidic Jewish community wasn't necessarily a numeric minority, but politically speaking, it was initially. But then quickly it became the political majority, that they had the political clout and they were able to vastly change the day-to-day -day lives of um, all those that were involved in the school district. Um, and because of that lesson of, that the minorities can become the a majority, I think it's um, really important for leaders to think about and discuss the communication that it, uh, needs to occur with minority populations and um, understanding minority vantage points and um, just understanding uh, that, that, that part of leadership. And then also, I'm a huge proponent that leaders should be legally literate. So I think an important um, point to take away from this case is that leaders have to be able to spot legal issues. They have to be able to understand federal and state law and, and be teachers of federal and state law. So in this case, they needed to be able to, to teach the Hasidic community about that they couldn't just simply change the law, that they were um, you know, parts of a greater political system. The leaders also need to be able to research the, the case law and understand um, how the law evolves. So in this case, it's the law's continuing to evolve because um, there's still litigation ongoing. Um, and then uh, leaders also uh, should be able to apply the law that they do learn about and they do research to solve legal dilemmas. So it's not n n n enough to just know the content of the law, to just know what the law is as it stands, but actually to have the skill to be able to apply that law to legal dilemmas. So um, those are the, the main uh, takeaways that, that I would take, but there's more, and, and I encourage you to uh, take advantage and read this case and utilize it in your classroom. <laughs> Thank you.